Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Electric vehicle competition continues to heat up and Rivian is doing a really great job expanding their production, apparently improving their profitability, although we'll, we'll learn more about how much they're losing on each vehicle when third quarter results are announced. But I want to dig into the company's cash position because I think this is what's ultimately really concerning about Rivian is that as it's ramping up production, it's burning through a ton of cash and we don't have visibility to the company actually get into free cash flow positive until the Georgia plant is built. And by then, this may be a company with a ton of debt on the balance sheet, weighing it down. So a lot to get into here. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. Check out fool.com slash ASYM for their top 10 stocks to buy right now. I have a link to that below and then a link in the show notes as well. And I wanna to get to the debt that Rivian is proposing raising in just a second, but let's go through some of the financial statements for just a second first. This is a look at Rivian's balance sheet. As you can see, these first two items on the right, June 30th, there was about $10.1 billion worth of cash. Offsetting that, there was $2.7 billion worth of debt, which you see right here. The problem is Rivian continues to burn through a ton of cash. This is just the three months ending June 30th. You can see that loss from operations is $1.7 billion. So a ton of cash being burned. In theory, the operations of the business are moving in the right direction as production ramps up and you're able to spread more of those fixed costs across more vehicles. And we did get some information about that. This is an SEC filing that Rivian put out on October 4th saying that they were looking at raising $1.5 billion. As part of that, they needed to disclose some information about what has gone on in the business over the last three months because they are going to be reporting earnings from the third quarter. This was after the third quarter ended. And so investors who are going to potentially give the company billions of dollars in the form of debt are going to want to know what has happened in the last three months. And there's a few pieces of information that they gave out. The first is that revenue for the three months ended September 30th is going to be between $1.29 and $1.33 billion. That would be up slightly from $1.1 billion in the second quarter of 2023. The more notable thing to me is that cash in equivalents and short-term investments are going to be down $1.1 billion. So basically burn through a $1.1 billion worth of cash in the three months ended September 30th. And that's these numbers right here, 10.2 billion down to 9.1 billion. Now management says in this little disclosure here that they expect that cash is gonna be sufficient to get them through to fund operations and complete capital expenditures through 2025. So that would be two years from now, may or may not be about the time that the Georgia plant is expected to open, but probably doesn't get them through the ramp of that Georgia plant. So a billion dollars per year, let's say that continues, you would run out of cash about the end of 2025. So now let's go back to what they're looking for from investors with raising money. They're looking for another $1.5 billion in principal amount, what they call green convertible senior notes due 2030. Now we have not seen that this is actually sold at the time that I'm recording this, and that's a little bit unusual because usually these things cap happen kind of back to back. But Rivian stock actually dropped after this was announced because it was an indication that they're burning more cash and in more need of cash than investors were anticipating. So this has not actually happened yet, but it is an indication that Rivian is looking for more cash. The challenge here is that Rivian is trying to increase their production at the same time as every other electric vehicle company and traditional automaker is trying to increase their production as well, even lowering prices in a lot of cases. I will get to one competitor that I think really needs to be worried about in just a second, but they're burning through cash. A cash hoard that used to be a huge benefit for Rivian is just starting to evaporate and that cash is starting to be replaced by debt. And I think this is fundamentally the problem for investors long-term. Debt is not free. It comes with interest or converts to stock depending on the kind of debt that it is. And it takes money from other owners of the business, meaning stockholders on the capitalization table. So as the debt level goes up, the stock price likely goes down if the enterprise value stays flat. And right now the enterprise value is actually coming down because 
Rivian stock is falling more than the debt they're looking to raise. There's a lot of moving pieces here, but at the end of the day, Rivian has to actually make money on the vehicles that they're producing. And we don't have any line of sight to that. That's just the reality. Yes, losses per vehicle are improving and that is moving in the right direction. But their current normal Illinois facility likely is not big enough to get them to cash flow positive. That's why they need that second Georgia facility, which is going to cost around $5 billion to build. That's $5 billion even after they burn money from operations. This is where you start to see the cash hole that Rivian actually has, despite all the money that they've raised. And now let's get to competition because this is where I think things get even more complicated. Now, Rivian does not have a cash flow business to fall back on to fund these operations, but other companies, other automakers do like Kia. And this is one that came out recently that I think is priced really aggressively. And Kia is going to be a really challenging brand for Rivian to compete against $55,000. So this is about $15,000 less than the starting price point of the R1S. And remember, R1S is most of Rivian's production now. They said that last quarter that production has moved to mostly R1S vehicles, seating for up to seven. So matches what we have from the Rivian at a lower price. And I think this is ultimately gonna be really compelling, especially as somebody who was looking for a third row electric vehicle earlier this year, the challenge with the Rivian is that one, it was too expensive. And two, it was not a very roomy vehicle. I am somebody who has a growing family. We're looking for more seats in the back, especially something like captain's chairs, which Rivian does not offer. So this third row, if it's equivalent to the Kia Telluride, that is a little bit more roomy than the R1S. And you have the captain's chair options, which you see here. I think this could ultimately be a really compelling option and this is significantly less expensive than the R1S. On top of the new Kia EV9, you have new vehicles coming from General Motors, Ford, Volkswagen, all adding those third row options in the electric vehicle class. And they're all, from everything I've seen, coming in at a price point likely lower than the R1S. So in a vacuum, if you just look at Rivian and you don't think that there's any other competition, the company is moving in the right direction. Losses per vehicle are improving. Production is going up. But the question that you then have to ask is, is the company going to have to lower prices to compete with some of these other electric vehicles? And what we've seen from a demand perspective, I think the answer is going to be yes. First of all, Tesla has lowered the prices of its vehicles, indicating that there's a weakness in demand in their products because this is not what they did during the pandemic when there was an excess of demand. So they've had to lower prices to compete with conventional vehicles. Rivian has not had to do that yet because they don't have the supply to have to play with this supply demand dynamic. But we have seen the backlog of vehicles and orders come down. We've seen those order estimates go from 2024 to mid 2023. That was what happened with my R1S. And now you can order an R1T specifically and get it in just a couple of weeks. So that backlog is really starting to shrink. If you're increasing production as your backlog goes down, that indicates that you don't have enough demand for every vehicle that you make. And competition is coming into the market and you're burning through cash. I think this is a very challenging dynamic for Rivian. And the worst part is that they're adding debt to the balance sheet, which only adds financial risk to the business. So it's very possible that all this works out, but investors need to know that there's a lot of risk with a company like Rivian unless they can get to the point where the R2 line is operational, where they're generating positive cash flow, probably not until 2026 or 2027. The company is going to be facing a lot of challenges. Not every company goes through this euphoric growth cycle the way that Tesla does. Much more likely that a lot of electric vehicle companies face a lot of financial challenges. I think ultimately that's what we're seeing from Rivian. They continue to raise debt. They continue to lose money on every vehicle. And that is not a way to a profitable business and a profitable investment long term. What do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.